Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of EETV, where I strive to make everything in entertainment. And finally, I get to take a look at a manga that's been turned into an anime that was completely under my radar. You know it as Hell's Paradise. A wonderful anime. I watched the first two episodes and I purposely waited into the second episode just to get a little bit more feel about this anime and i'm glad i did because the first episode while good and informative i wanted to see more of the story and what was going on here so let's begin this is not going to be a traditional uh play by play i'm going to tell you uh just the overall outlines of what's going on here and get into what i think might happen and I don't know, I don't think I want to spoil myself by diving into the manga just yet until the anime is over. So let's begin. Now the first scene of Hell's Paradise opens up on the main character of the anime, Gabimaru. He is a shinobi and the, the governor of this particular province is attempting to execute him with no fail. The sword breaks off of Gabimaru's neck and the rest of the, uh, the first episode goes into Gabimaru uh, questioning himself why he wants to live. The governor tries uh, countless things to execute Gabimaru. He, first one he tries to behead him and it doesn't work. The sword breaks. Then he tries to quarter him, you know, taking animals and trying to rip off his limbs. That doesn't work. Uh, afterwards, he tries to boil boil him in oil. That didn't work. Oh, I missed a step. So he, he tries to set him on fire first. He tried to set him on fire, then boil him in oil. And all these particular methods do not work until we are introduced to the other character in the series by the name of Sagiri. Sagiri. So we meet Sagiri and she seems to be an interviewer or an inspector at first in the first episode and you see her taking notes about Gabimaru every time he's attempted to be executed and it fails and she's questioning him about his about all, all sorts of things you know at one point I found kind of funny that when she finds out that he's a shinobi that she asked him to see some sort of ninjutsu just for personal interest and he was like no so I, I like how they had that just that little back and forth but when you when you view episode one and episode well part of episode two you find out the reason why this is going on is because she is interviewing gabimaru for the purpose of him having to to take on a mission to find this uh, elixir in this, uh, in this island. And um, she's questioning his will to live because anybody who does not have the will to live is not going to try very hard to get through this difficult task. So she's basically holding an interview to make sure that Gabi Maru has enough strong will to come back from this mission, this impossible mission alive and she sees enough from him to select him during the process. Also, before I forget, at the end of episode one, the Gabimaru and Sagiri have a short battle because she deems what a person, how they act right before they die is their true self. And since Gabimaru had a strong will to live, you know, breaking his restraints and it even shocked himself that he wasn't even that he was resisting so hard and evading all of her blows because he knew that her sword strikes would kill him he even had a, a little premonition that it premonition if he didn't dodge the attack that he would be beheaded one of her talents is to a great um how you could say she's a great judge of character so that's how she also selected gabi motto for the mission and then when we move on to episode two, we basically see everybody from the governor of the entire province and other members of the Asiman, hope I pronounced that correctly, clan that she's a part of. The sword testers, they have come with their 
selected death row convicts to take on this impossible mission into this paradise and each all of the people who are there are given a brief backstory about how they came to find this mysterious island what is rumored to be there and the expeditions that went out how they came back looking like they've been merged with the flora that has been there but the place has been described as being very beautiful but very deadly so they basically hold a uh what you could say a free-for-all in the second episode to whittle down the numbers of the the death row inmates who are going to take on this impossible task and we find out you know then we're introduced to all of basically like the main players of uh that's going to be in the anime we see highlighted shown of skills and close-ups of some of the in death row criminals that will be taking part in this mission first we're introduced to Isaiah chobe he's the bandit leader then we see the kenowich uh, the female ninja use uh yuzi reha i hope i pronounced that correctly yuzi raha and then we see the famous swordsman known as the blade dragon tamiya gotusasu i'm butchering these names you have to excuse me for this then we're introduced to the giant of a man roku rota you know who's uh, been known to eat bears head first and of course, our favorite uh, runaway shinobi, Gabimaru. And one thing I wanted to say about this, you know, even though he does not like killing because he wants to lead a normal life, and that's because of his wife. And he has a special relationship with his wife because she was the only one to treat him like a human being. And she treats him with kindness, and he in turn does the same and he wants to provide her with a normal existence because of what she has done for him and this is special too because even herself even though she didn't go through the grueling training that he had to or endure to become such a high level shinobi she was punished for attempting to lead a normal life by her own father and was scarred for doing so so that's one of the reasons why gabimaro has that's his attachment right there and what he wants to do for his wife was showing kindness to him and they're going to embark on this mission and we actually get to see a glimpse of what the island actually looks like at the end of the second episode i did take a little bit of peek ahead with the manga and i also went onto the website and grabbed some information there is one more person that we're going to be introduced to new newer guy i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly i'm, I'm sorry for butchering his names Nuragai, and it's supposed to be another female character who's often mistaken as a young man and she was put on the uh death row list because she was lowering supposedly accidentally lowering samurais to her village we're going to go into each of the background information of all these characters because even though i was i was only introduced to them briefly each of them have enough of a backstory that i want to take a deep dive into and also do videos on because uh i think they're they're good you know you know i'm i'm, I'm digging all the characters that i was introduced to so far the story seems good i also want to get more into the members of the asima clan the clan that uh Suguri is a part of i'm looking forward to this anime um one thing that i got out of this if those of you who have read the book dante's inferno about the uh, dante's inferno if you if you read that book this gives me a little bit of vibes of that because you know someone going through the hero's journey to get back to someone they love and also what i'm getting from this I know as odd as this might seem because this is a, a new anime that I watched and I didn't, even, I didn't even get a chance to read the manga yet, but this slightly reminds me of the video game from back in the 80s, Fantasy Zone. And the reason why is because Fantasy Zone was supposed to be a video game like that the place was beautiful, but it was deadly as well. And that just reminded me of that they keep saying that this place is paradise and we keep seeing 
this beautiful flora and but then the people who come back you know they're somewhat merged with this flora and they are seemingly killed they're killed and my question because i have not read the manga yet and i'm not going to spoil some things for myself is why are they killed are they killed because they were not skilled enough in battle i mean that could be one reason were they killed because they had a certain thing in their hearts i mean what's going to allow these individuals all these individuals these executioners and these death row criminals to survive their island besides their skills i think there's more to it because obviously i mean if you if you just look at it as a new person like me obviously the government has sent some warriors to explore this place especially after hearing the rumor about the elixir you would send your best warriors to retrieve it for you and they did not make it back so it's got to be something more than surviving this place in skill you know I, i'm just interested to see where they've taken where they've taken this and this is good for those who definitely like myself has not read the manga we're definitely interested in this because how is this floor being managed to be fused with people does the danger there attack your mind as well as your body well we're going to find out all this stuff i thank you for tuning in for this i'll be doing weekly updates on hell's paradise and deep dives into it as well as as well as only getting into the cliff notes of each episode i'll see you in the next one take care everybody